Hi, and welcome back to Pittman's Pumpkin Patch, Pittman's Garden Patch. It is April 12th, 2015, and this is the first video of the 2015 growing season for spring and summer. Uh, well, it's been a long time since I've been on. I've been cameraless again for quite a while, but now I got one back. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be do taking you on a tour through my experiences throughout the gr growing season. And... Um, showing you all the tips and tricks and things that I, I know that I've learned so I can pass it on to other people and um, you know just share my joy and passion and love for gardening and growing my own food and sharing some of the products and things that I uh, that I use and my results and, and, and my failures too because let me tell you I, I have failures all the time and um, uh, for those who don't know me or those who or just getting to, to know me. I'm an elementary school teacher here in the state of Virginia, uh, near the ocean. <laughs> and, um, you know, I have a couple kids or so. I have a few kids actually, uh, you know, biological and, and otherwise. So, you know, I just figured I wanted to share, you know, with you guys my passion because I've learned so much from the people on the YouTube uh, gardening communities whether it's John Kohler, whether it's um, Ray over the Praxis channel, whether it's <clears throat> Gary up in Maryland, I think his last name is Pulchek or something like that. I, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing it. I'm trying to remember the uh, spelling of it. Um, I've learned other things from, you know, uh, across the pond, as we like to call it, from people over in England. A gentleman who has an, uh, an orchard of apples and pears and plums and all kinds of things and I've asked some questions about uh, apple trees and whatnot and uh, gosh I mean people out in California it uh, Callie Kim and uh, another gentleman I'm trying to remember I'm just new to his uh, new subscriber to his channel um, he's a gentleman I've asked some questions about pruning apple trees and whatnot and I, you know, I just find this whole YouTube community uh, for gardening so fascinating and so interesting because it's, it's got a lot of nice people out there who are just willing to help and, and uh, share their experiences and their failures and everything, just like I am. And, you know, I just want to be a part of that because I, my passion for gardening and growing my own food and becoming more sustainable is like that of many others in the garden community. Some do it for just for fun. Some do it just for the health benefits. Some do it for the, you know, getting off the government grid, you know, getting out of that kind of rat race. And some of us do it for a combination of all those things and a few, maybe a few other reasons that we don't know about, you know. But whatever your reasons are, get into gardening. It's so therapeutic. It is so healthy and beneficial for you. Uh, you know, John Calder likes to say, um, do the best you can, basically. He says, good, better, best, or something like that. You know, with all the resources that you have, you do the best you can with what you have. And uh, and that's what I try to do. And, and so come join me on this journey through my garden. And if you have any questions, just post the comments and everything, and I'll be happy to answer them. And thank you to everybody in the uh, YouTube garden community. Um, all the videos and everything have taught me so much. You guys continue to answer my questions again, whether it's Praxis, whether it's John Kohler, whether it's Gary, whether it's Callie Kim, uh, you know, and, and, and a few others as well. And again, I thank you so much, and I just want to be a part of that as well. So, without further ado, let me take you on a tour of what's growing on here. And um, like I said, it's April 12, 2015, and let's get things started. Okay. Right here, I have um, blueberry bushes, eight blueberry bushes in these black fabric pots. These are smart pots, and I love them very much. But they have lots of different other kinds of fabric pots. Look them up online, do a Google search. I enjoy them a lot. Um, they are in full bloom. Uh, most of them, I think seven out of the eight, are in full bloom. But there's so many flower blossoms on these things. And uh, oh, before I go any further, I am definitely afraid of bees and wasps and hornets and yellow jackets. I know. Why are you gardening if you're afraid of those things? Because <laughs> you need those things to help get you the food you want. 
Yes, I understand that. It's a love-hate relationship. <laughs> you know, so... Um, let's see if I can't... And my vision is not very good. I'm legally blind and can't drive a car and whatnot. So, but if, if I can do it, being a teacher and being legally blind, if I can do it, you guys can do it. So, don't be afraid. Get in there and do it. So, anyhow... Um, and I'm just on a rental property anyway, so everything's got to come with me. I'm hoping to get some acreage in a couple of years or so where I can start permanently putting things in the ground and really get my gardening into something even bigger. More apple trees, more plum trees, peach trees, whatever, you know, just start getting more perennial things involved. So anyhow, I don't want to keep rambling. I've got so much to do because this is my first video of the year. Um, so here are all these flower blossoms. And this is very cool because I've had these um, blueberry bushes um, but gosh, I think this is my third growing season. And when I bought them there, I think they were already three years old, three or four years old. So these are just now coming into their, getting into their really productive years, I believe. Because they say, oh, around five or six years old, they start really start to put on a lot of, you know, fruit for you. And this particular variety right here, um, this is a dwarf variety. Sorry for my shadow. Um... Uh, this is a dwarf variety, and last year it did not produce one single flower that I can recall. I know it didn't produce any fruit. Not one single flower, if I remember correctly. And this year, just look at it. Boatloads and boatloads of flowers all over this thing. And I am just happy as can be. And other things that have, uh, you know, they're just putting on so many much more flowers this year. Just crazy, you know. And a couple of days, a day or two ago, um, my wife and I came out here, and I, you know, I can't see very well, and I, and I got close to things, and I could hear some buzzing, and that, of course, backed me off from the plants. And I asked my wife, I said, I said, well, how many, you know, bees or stuff going in? Are they landing on the flowers? Are they doing this? Are they doing that? Because, you know, I can't really see all that good, and I don't want to get too close. <laughs> and uh, she's like, oh, yeah, there's some bumblebees in there, and they're getting in there, and they're doing their thing. And I'm like, all right. So that got me pumped up and excited because I'm like, okay, give me some fruit this year. Give me more fruit, more fruit. Of course, now i got to protect them from the birds if everything happens. Uh, right. But I'm going to share one tip from, for you right off the get-go. Self-pollinating plants. Here's tip number one for you. Self-pollinating plants. And I learned this from other people, so it's not like I, I'm a rocket scientist and I came up with this all on my own. But I had... Um, those plants that self-pollinate, whether it's tomatoes, uh, peppers, uh, most blueberries, and things like that, they are self and strawberries. They are self-pollinating, which means they they have all the male and female parts in the flower itself. They don't have separate male flowers or separate female flowers like pumpkins do, for example. But so these self-pollinating things, you uh, plants, you can sit there and um, help set more fruit by you know sometimes shaking the branches. Sorry, I didn't mean to shake the camera too. <laughs> you could shake the branches that, to loosen the pollen. But one trip, uh, trick that I found works pretty darn good is I take an electric toothbrush. I have an old electric toothbrush. And I took the uh, bristles off of it to expose that metal rod that's on the inside that does all the vibrating when you turn on the, uh, your toothbrush. And I use that. And I go behind the flower heads or on the uh, stems and branches that have all the flowers on them and I vibrate that thing and I make that pollen shake and loosen up and everything and it falls all over itself all, all over the male and female parts inside and it sets the fruit and you can get more fruit whether it's tomatoes and peppers and everything by doing that and so I figured well most blueberries are self-pollinating yes they benefit greatly from having another variety of blueberry close by pollinating uh, blooming at the same time so you can get cross-pollination and increase your yields but I figure you know what if it works for tomatoes and peppers that are self-pollinating and most blueberries are self-pollinating that also then why not try the same thing with them it should work it's it, they have the same it's the same principle so uh, this morning before you know obviously videotaping this I came out here and I pretty much went to every single stem and flower head and vibrated the heck out of it and you know just did all of that kind of stuff and 
and uh, you know I'm hoping to get more fruit now I'm gonna still you know of course the bees and wasps and stuff will still keep doing their thing and that's fine um, but I just want to see if I can get more because I don't have a whole lot of bees uh, uh, and hornets and thing or whatever to come in wasps to come in and do my stuff for me so I am trying to help uh, uh, my uh, fruit production here a little bit okay so now sorry about that on to the next thing let me come over here a little bit oh by the way he <laughs> there's my little fresh garden tomato right there I've been growing plants inside the during the winter time in the garage under my grow light and so I get uh, some fresh fruits and things during the winter time too he <laughs> uh, <laughs> But here are my blackberry bushes, right here. And I made this uh, two-wire trellis that I learned online. And uh, now they're not flowering yet, but they're doing their vegetative growth. And uh, so they're, they're coming along and I've got them trained on the trellis and everything. And I tie them up or I wrap them around. Here's a good view of the blueberry bushes. Now over here, and most of this big bed right here are my strawberry plants. And I got a new variety this year, um, Camarosa strawberries. And look down in here. There's some strawberry flowers right there. Okay. Just a few to start off the growing season. But see, I can come out here and vibrate those too and get them to self-pollinate. And if the, if the conditions are right, if the plant is ready to accept fruit but then you know it'll do it now of course these are still young so these probably won't set you know these are probably probably similar to what pumpkins do pumpkins will put out their male flowers a little at a time but mostly the males will come out first and i think that's to kind of help get the bees to start coming to the flowers get them used to coming to the the, the pumpkin plants and then it'll start getting the females coming out a little bit later and i think maybe the uh these strawberries might be doing the same thing by putting out a few little flowers that they know probably aren't going to pollinate but just to get the bees that start coming in or start attracting a little bait if you will and i got a few other uh, varieties of uh, strawberries in here all star they don't look very good as you know right down here as, as well as the ones that i've had more established since late october early november of last year but i've i had some space and i wanted to try other varieties too now when we talk about failures, here we go. Pepper plants. This year I'm having a heck of a time with pepper plants. Last year I had a bumper crop. Amazing. The pruning techniques that I learned from Praxis, uh, from Ray over the Praxis channel, made an enormous impact on the production that I got. It was insane how much I got. So I'm going to share that tip later on, or you can just go over to uh, Ray's uh, channel at the Praxis. What was it five 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 seven one two something like that? <laughs> Sorry, Ray. <laughs> but um, I've been trying to grow all my seeds, most of everything indoors, you know. And what happens, of course, when you grow indoors is you get fungus gnats. And I've been combating those things for two years now, maybe three seasons, and I just have a heck of a time with them. And what they do, they lay their larva down inside your uh, soil. And then they hatch and they go down in there and they're feeding on the compost and all the organic matter that you have in your soil. But also then they start eating the root hairs of your plants, your developing plants, and then they kill it. And they, or they, and they stop it from developing. And I'm just like, uh, and that's what they did. Between that and I had a few mice problem. Mice would go in there and they would eat my watermelon seeds. They would eat my pepper seeds. And so I got rid of the mice. <laughs> and uh, but the pepper, the damage is done with those fungus gnats. Now, uh, again, Ray over at the Praxis Channel has some kind of predatory mites that he was using because he was having the same kind of issue. And so I'm going to further research what he has, uh, what he was using, because I talked to him just the other day, and uh, he said that uh, no, nope, he's only seen one fungus gnat flying around since you know introducing those predatory mites in there so i'm going to look into using that for my uh next year's um seeds and everything so that i can keep more of my pepper plants because look at this 
that's after about two months of growth. N really nothing. I mean, just absolutely pathetic. Now that one right there might slowly develop. It looks like it's getting a new set of leaves, but the rest of the stuff are going to be useless. These two, this one right here, and that one right there, store-bought. And even they look pathetic. I don't know what's going on, <laughs> but uh, they're not looking as good as I would like them to be. Not as good as I can definitely grow them myself. But you know what? It's That's one of the failures. New additions to the garden. First time growing for me. And that's the thing I love about gardening. You can grow new things and it kind of rekindles your spirit, rekindles that, that passion for growing. Here are my onions I'm growing for the first time. And these, this bed here and that second one, one right there, full of onions. And this one's tipped over a little bit. Oh, but I can feel I can feel it getting a little established in there. I can feel it; the roots are starting to take hold. And uh, anyways, oop! The bees are coming. I hear them. Please don't mess with me. I'm afraid of you guys. I'm just shooting videos. <laughs> so, anyways, my onions in here. Now I have three varieties. And the thing that, that that bothered me when I went and bought these from the local Home Depot. And these are bonnie plants. They weren't labeled on the on the um, the wrappings that were around the uh, the bunches, the onion bunches. I know I picked up Walla Wallas, I picked up some Texas Sweet, and I picked up some Granix Yellow, which are supposed to be like your Vidalias. But they uh, they were labeled that way in the case on the, on the case itself at the store. But when I brought them home, I looked all over the labels and I couldn't figure out which was which. So. And you notice these ones on the far end there, that half of the bed, those, when they sat in the bag in the garage for like three or four days, all of them did actually, and they lost, that, that particular batch lost its greenery. They all turned milky white, kind of a milky brownish white color. So I was like, are they dead? Are they no good? Because they lost their green uh, leaves. And um, a couple of people that I asked about it said, no, 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 they should be okay. There should be enough energy left in the bulbs that uh that they'll send up new leaves so you know so i went as long as you got the root hairs there so and they were there so i planted them anyways and we'll see what happens see if they start to get their green leaves back in, a, in <clears throat> excuse me in a week or two now the, of course these others down here they have their still have their green so they should be good to go and uh like i said here's some more onions all in this bed here too now, I, I, I know this is a waste of space. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. But this one bed, I just like I couldn't figure out what else to put in it. I didn't have anything else. The, uh, the fungus gnats killed so many things. I just didn't. I had maybe one watermelon plant that basically survived and looked like it was going to make it. So I, that's a Jubilee variety, which was like these are like two-year-old seeds. And uh, so I put that in there. I may put one other strawberry, uh, one other watermelon plant in there, and I'm going to contain it, all the vines in here, because watermelon plants will take over fast. But I had a pretty good crop last year for my first time trying watermelons, uh, and I had one that actually tasted really great. So we'll see how it goes. If that doesn't start to do much, then I'll find something to put in there. Over here. Oh, look, I left out my, ooh, I left out my drill and my drill bits. Isn't that nice? Hmm. Oh, uh, well. Ooh, and it rained. Oh, my, it may have rained, or at least it do. I'm going to have to see if that still works. But anyways, this bed right here, last year was my pepper plant. This year, on the far end right there, that row is going to be cantaloupes. Now, I don't particularly like the taste of cantaloupes, but I love the smell of it. But some of my family members like cantaloupe, so I'm going to try to grow them, you know, something new. And there's my trellis that I made out of PVC pipe and a nylon trellis net. And that's all bolted into the wood. It's hammered into the ground a little bit, but it's also bolted into the uh, raised bed for security. And I use zip ties to attach the net to the poles. And uh, so that's good to go. Also, in the middle bed, the middle row there, I am going to put squash and then this one right here I'm going to do zucchinis or vice versa 
So over here uh, in this bed, there in the middle, there's oregano from two plants. Now I even had to cut it back in, um, a couple days ago. But that's oregano that survived snowstorms and snowstorms uh, in went in February, and it got buried under snow and everything. And look at it; it's still here. It's still growing. So I now learned something new: that oregano will survive winter, snow, everything. And it did. And it's come back, and it's healthy, green, and everything. Now. These plants right in here, of course, are my tomato plants. I pruned them, and I, yes, you see it. I think you saw it. Tomatoes. Shh, don't tell everybody. They'll be coming over. I got tomato plants growing. I mean, tomatoes are already growing. Now, these are ones I grew inside. And fungus gnats don't like tomato plants. They may hover around underneath them, but the larvae don't particularly bother tomato plants too much. And that I learned, too. But these are better boys that I grew. So you can see the more tomatoes. And again, I set these with uh, that electric toothbrush uh, tip I shared with you just a moment ago. Let's see if this thing still works. Yep, drill still works. <laughs> so what I did, here's another tip to uh, do, is I buried these very deeply. Now I could come in and add more soil in here to bury the stem up here so you can get more uh, roots develop, developing. Because that's the one thing about the tomato plants, if you didn't already know, that all along the stem, there's the little hairs there and you can get, you bury that under soil and you get more roots. And that's going to help your plant in the long run, especially during the heat. See the tomatoes growing? Yes sir. Now. I'll swing over here because this, all those are better boys, but this variety right here, this is my Amana orange. It's going to be like a pound and a half, two pounds of uh, tomato. And I only got one seed to germinate out of the, from the whole packet. <laughs> That's horrible odds. But this thing's already producing fruit, and it takes a long time to develop. And again, there's the flower heads on the other plant. And what you would do is you just come right up here with your electric toothbrush, and you just vibrate it, and it shakes that pollen loose, and it helps to set your fruit. And you can come in and tap and whack like that. But I find the electric toothbrush really does a good job on it. Okay. And what I plan to put in the rest of this beds in here. Uh, or cucumber plants. I have Ar Armenian yard long cucumbers and I have some lemon cucumbers I'm trying. I don't particularly care for cucumbers too much, but my kids do and my wife does. So I figure, share. That's a lemon balm plant that you see straight out there. Okay. Look at that oregano. <laughs> and you can just come in there and brush it and it sends the smell in the air. Yep. And then. Smell your hand, it just makes you want to go get a big bowl of spaghetti. <laughs> so anyways, that's just two plants. Oh, do I see weeds growing in there? Oh yes, I do, look at you. I see some grass, gotta go down to the base. Sorry guys. Ugh, no, I think I got most of it. Anywho, <laughs> over here in this bed, more strawberries. My three and a half year old son Luke, he loves coming out here in the garden with me. He loves eating those strawberries. And you see how these, you know, they're coming along. The spring's waking them up. And again, these are Camarosas. Uh, so this is a new variety for me. Usually I do Chandlers, but I, they didn't have that available for me this year. And a couple of those plants over there in the far end you see are all stars. And you see how kind of puny they are. Uh, but uh, it is what it is. <laughs> okay. Well, I wanted to save my new additions for last. But uh, I, you see that what I got there? I was going to start making a brand new big humongous bed that I was going to do. But uh, since I rent the property, they, eh, they're all on me to back off of my gardening. But uh, we're kind of coming up with a compromise. 
so I may have to scale back my production but I want to show you the new additions to my family here my garden family I have two apple trees and I have the pots inside 45 gallon pots I'm gonna put them in for at least two maybe three years and then when I hopefully get my own property I'll then transplant them out during the winter time late winter time and uh, get them into the ground out of those 45 gallon pots but they're in three gallon pots right now from the nursery and I'll transplant them out uh, in a week or so there are this one right here is a Fuji apple tree okay and the second one over to the left there or the furthest one away is a honey crisp apple tree and I hear they're one of the uh, most tastiest apples you can get now I've tried a couple one a couple in the store and they were very juicy but I figured if they're that good in the store I can make them better because if you grow your own stuff you know you're gonna grow great things um, but it's already putting on leaf buds. The, the green, it's already starting to, uh, to pop out. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit on that. See there? And I've already come out and done some pruning on those things. And I've learned, and, and the Honeycrisp is now just starting to uh, put uh, some of the greenery is just starting to um, begin to grow. So it's about, the Honeycrisp is about two, maybe three weeks behind uh, on the Fuji. But they're supposed to be good for pollinating each other. So we'll see how that uh, experiment goes. Now these are about maybe three to four year old trees and I don't expect a whole lot of fruit or whatever from them this year, if any at all. But I do believe I've seen at least one fruit bud on the Honeycrisp. I'll have to check them out a little further and uh, things a little bit more detail. Um, <clears throat> but I've learned pruning techniques, outside buds, you know, trying to shape your trees and all kinds of things. And this is a learning process for me. Um, but I've asked questions, I've watched videos, I've come out and checked my trees, say, yep, that, that, I, see, I see that, I understand that now, okay. And that's just how I approach things uh, with my learning on, the, on this stuff. And uh, if you find that you're getting kind of tired or bored or over gardening, try growing something new. Try doing something different to revitalize your passion and joy for it. A couple days ago, earlier this week, um, both my wife and I, we got one of those stomach bugs and I, we were just laid out. And I, um, I came out here, I, I thought I was feeling better and everything, and I came out. And I was just in here, you know, revitalizing the beds and planting the onions. And I was just not feeling it, you know. I was just, it was like a chore doing this. And I and I just, for, for a little bit there, for like maybe, I don't know, 15, 20, 30 minutes, I was just like, you know what, I think I'm kind of burned out on gardening. I'm kind of tired of this. You know, this is, and I looked around, I saw all the things I still had to do. And I just like, oh my gosh. This is you know, this is insane. I need to stop this, or I need to scale this back, or whatever. But you know, I figured I attributed it to just not feeling well, you know, being sick. My energy level was down, and everything, and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, that's it. I, I you know, that's pretty much what it was, because I got my passion back. And I am going to do things a little differently, you know, as far as I like. I'm starting to gravitate a little bit more towards perennials. Perennials are, of course, are plants that come back year after year and because it's it's less work but at the same time it's going to keep on producing for me you know and that and I, that's what i wanted to do i want to be able to do all that hard work you know digging the holes planting the, the the tree or the bush or whatever and letting nature do its thing and, and doing that kind of stuff and that's what i want to do that's why i like these blueberries and my blackberries and my strawberries and these apple trees and things and when i get to my own property you know hopefully two, three acres, you know, I'm going to start having more, you know, trees and, 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 and fruiting trees, not just regular trees, I want fruiting trees, so I can do all the work to dig the hole, to put all the good stuff in the soil and everything, and then let, and do some pruning, and let nature do its thing, and do a little pruning over the years, and reap the benefits, that way, I can rest assured that those things are doing what it's supposed to do, and it's going to give me my apples, my plums, my peaches, whatever, my blueberries, and still be able to focus things on onions and uh, leafy greens and stuff. And I have a few other plants inside. 
that are new and I'm hoping that things are going to develop. I don't know because the fungus gnats did a, uh, did a job on my things. But uh, we'll see how that goes and if things work out I'll share those things with you. But uh, in any event I know I went on a lot and I thank you for staying with me. Hopefully you did. And um, I will be making more videos here in the near future and uh, you know, if you have any questions or comments please share them with me and everything and I will be uh, happy to answer them so from Pittman's pumpkin patch Pittman's garden patch all right all you gardeners it's springtime let's get going all right bye